You're listening to the Geekly Chronicles, Series 4, Episode 8. Thanks for listening back to the Geekly Chronicles. This show was recorded on the 15th of July, 2016. Enjoy! Hello. 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 Welcome to the show in the week that in Lincolnshire a drone has been delivering ice cream to beachgoers. And in the week where Pizza Hut rolled out menus entirely written in emoji to celebrate, you guessed it, World Emoji Day. And a moth, an escaped lynx, and a cash machine all have their own Twitter accounts. And in the week that Kez is off in faraway lands, as you may have been able to tell from the uh, the pre-recordedness of that in the week <laughs> that, uh, it's the Geekly Chronicles, episode eight. That's kind of weird. It is. Weird with a beard. Weird with a beard. It's, can you believe we are 80% of the way through this series? I can't believe it. I, I can hardly believe it myself. And I'm also rather terrified because today I'm producing because Ooh. Kez is not here. But uh, we will be speaking to Kez a bit later in the show because um, we, we wouldn't do a show without you. No. Um, and we've got all your usual favourite features as well, like the Tumble Fumble and Would You Fund It uh, coming up later on. I believe it's your turn this week, mm. isn't it? It is. Uh, so, which is good because you're here. Yes. So... Uh, <laughs> So uh, we'll have a listen to your pitch a little later on. This is not a monkey wrench. This is a monkey wrench. Indeed it is. Uh, So next up we have Would You Fund It? We do. And it's my week. It is your week. What what joys do you have for us? Well, my current prevailing, prevailing, if I can get my words out, uh, (laughs) obsession, (laughs) which means everything I do and say, Always seems to revert back to the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, sure. Um, mainly because I've kind of binged Walking Dead twice within the last, I don't know, three months. Um, okay. <laughs> so with that in mind, uh, I was actually thinking about ridiculous board games. And so originally I was thinking about doing Zombie Monopoly. I like where this is going. <laughs> but then I realised somebody has already done it and called it Zombieopoly. Which oh, I, that's... Which, I thought it was a I shame mean, because it would blatantly have to be Zombopoly, right? Absolutely. That's that's just shocking. I know, yeah. <laughs> but then we were talking about it together mm. and uh, we were sort of saying how much more ridiculous uh, Zombie Cluedo would be uh, and kind of dismissed it. Mm, yeah, we did. We were like, oh, that, that'd never work. Because it would be everyone, everywhere, with all the weapons, <laughs> yeah. all the time. <laughs> but but then um, we thought about it. <laughs> but then we thought about it some more <laughs> and realised that actually it could be quite an interesting uh, twist on a classic. Yeah. So... Uh, How would that go, do you think? Let's, let's find out. This adaptation of a board game classic comes with an extra deadly twist. Can you identify the murderer before the victim turns and eats you alive? <laughs> It takes one of my favourite games to a whole new level. I'll certainly be adding this game to the selection in my apocalypse bunker. You search an abandoned town for clues, visiting possible crime scenes such as the police station, pharmacy, grocery store and gym. Any of your fellow survivors could be the murderer. Was it Reverend Green with the machete in the church? Could it have been Mrs Peacock at the fire station with the Remington semi-automatic? You will have to engage with them to find out. The game's setup is quick and easy. Simply place the wipe clean board on a flat surface and strategically place plenty of chain link fence and fake blood from the sachets provided around the town. There's so much blood, I can't tell if this is supposed to be Colonel Mustard or Miss Scarlet anymore. When you're ready to begin your game, press start on the turn timer. The turn timer will beep during your game when the victim has turned from cold corpse to flesh-hungry zombie. This can take anything from five minutes to one hour. Once this happens, the zombie will begin shuffling around the town, guided by a throw of the dice each time a player takes their turn. If you happen to be in a building when the zombie arrives, you are eaten and out of the game. Oh no, it's found the bunker! It's tense, it's bloody, it's Zombie Cluedo. Wow. 
Wow. (laughs) That's how that would go. Yes, that that is exactly how I imagined that would go. Um, Not enough board games come with a wipe clean board. (laughs) I it worries me. Like the 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 sequence of events that would lead up to you coming to that conclusion. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, I like to how snack. much how much fake blood. <laughs> I like to snack while I game, so <laughs> that's fair enough. Even board games that don't have copious amounts of of fake blood thrown in <laughs> could use a wipe clean board. I they think. could. Um, you make a very good point. Uh, so if you think that uh, that zombie Cluedo should should become a thing, how can people how can people vote? How can you vote? You can vote at gklyco forward slash fund it. Or you can go to our Twitter account where you will find a poll. You will. Mm. And uh, we'll be checking in later in the show to find out whether or not our our live listeners tonight would fund Zombie Cluedo. Early indications are looking positive. But uh, we will check back on that uh, in a bit. With you in the producer's seat, I can't look over your shoulder and see the the promising early signs as I can usually do. That's that's very true. <laughs> so this is most frustrating. <laughs> I, I haven't I haven't shown you how to get to the thingy. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I get a feeling you're not going to either. <laughs> no, it's it it's better for suspense reasons if mm-hmm. I don't. Um, and speaking of suspense reasons, that was a that was a completely pointless segue. But we'll be back in a bit with the tumble fumble. It's a bit like fighting a hundred duck-sized horses, only more ridiculous. It's time for this week's Tumble Fumble. Are you ready for a scroll in the hay? Catherine. Tumble Fumble time. Yeah. So I'm going to start us off with a hashtag on Twitter that has just recently been trending. So if people are on on the Twitters, they can go check that out. And it is Boozy Books. Boozy Books. Boozy Books. Uh, All for, right. For example, uh, the girl who regretted getting the dragon tattoo. <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. Uh, shouting at strangers on a train. Yeah. Uh, the chronic ales of Narnia. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, one I particularly like, uh, drinks and drinkability. Oh. I think that's clever. Oh, that like is that. clever. Um, also, uh, James and the Giant Peach Snaps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, are you uh, seeing any that, that stand out? or? Uh... I'm, I'm just having a look through the, uh, the list that you sent me. Uh, <laughs> I, I may well. have already read them out. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you have already read them out. Yeah. Uh, um... But some of these are fantastic. Um, as we were saying uh, before we started the show, uh, there are surely limitless possibilities for Harry Potter. Um based ones but i have just seen one which like harry potter and the half cut prince yes <laughs> <laughs> but uh, i have just seen one which is uh is very much tickling me tequila mockingbird oh nice nice weird. well done uh what about uh, silence of the lambrini <laughs> yes although yes. in my experience lambrini rarely leads to silence <laughs> <laughs> pims and prejudice hmm. uh <laughs> another one for you there So, yeah, I mean, as I say, you know, yeah, boozing rarely leads to good things. So, uh, yeah, drink responsibly, kids. Yes. Um, Or don't drink at all if you're a kid. Um, (laughs) Probably for the best. For him, the Bellini tolls. Nice. Adventures of Huckleberry Gin. (laughs) Yeah. It does amuse me how creative people are with these. With alcohol, particularly. Hmm. It seems to be... People know their books and their drinks. They do. That's... Is this... This is truly what Twitter is made for. So, boozy books. Boozy books. What else have we got? What else have we got? Um, what else have I got? <laughs> Let me see if I can remember. <laughs> That'd be um, good. That would be good, wouldn't it? So, next up, we have uh, another Twitter account. This time, it's a Twitter bot. Um, we have a, a great love of bots here in the in the Geekly studio. We do. Um, this is uh, one I particularly like. It's called Magic Realism Bot. Magic Which doesn't realism. really tell you too much. Um, mm. And from what I can gather, uh, somebody has written some words and then somebody sure. else has written some, written some code to go with the words. <laughs> and together they spit out kind of magical little stories in 140 characters or less once every two hours. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so the stories are really quite random, but occasionally quite beautiful as well. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm scrolling through these now and I... Some of them really are. 
I'm liking a Macedonian baroness invents a new theory of economics based on the movement of scorpions. <laughs> That's a story I'd read. Yeah. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you did. This is true. Um, there's there's one that I found that's just delightfully literal. Uh, a gas station attendant discovers that the economy is being controlled by capitalism. Mm. <laughs> yes, correct. Next well uh, next question. Uh, <laughs> Three bookshop owners invent a parallel universe where everything is SQL injections. Right. Uh, there is a volcano in California. It spews out orchestras. Wow. Yeah. Orchestra. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be very tuneful, I can imagine. Mm, or just painful <laughs> yeah it could it could maybe not it depends whether or not there's some kind of volcanic conductor oh there is a you can <laughs> <Hashtag> volcanic conductor <laughs> um there is a eucalyptus tree in barcelona that is 60 times wiser than you wow exactly 60 times exactly wiser than me 60 times i that is at least you know 60 wise <laughs> 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 what, is, what units is Y is measured in? That's a good question. Um, do do let us know, listeners, if you if you can work out how you measure wisdom. A university student finds a Renaissance book containing instructions for building a garden out of burritos. <laughs> yes, take me to that garden. Burrito garden. Wow. Mm. Oh, I like the idea of burrito garden. So that's Magic Realism Bot. That is Magic uh, Realism Bot. At Magic Realism Bot. If you On want Twitter, to, uh, if you want follow to go, it along. Uh, go check that out. We'll, mm -hmm. uh, we'll also be tweeting about these if we haven't already. Yep. Um, and uh, finally, uh, our last thing is uh, a little website that I discovered this week. Um, HipsterLogoGenerator.com. Oh, wow. Brilliant. It does exactly what it says on the tin. It helps you generate hipster looking logos. <laughs> For your hipster business. Fantastic. Uh, I'm uh, <laughs> loading this now. Yeah. Oh wow. It there's there's a lot of there's a lot of options. You can you can choose your your base shape for your uh, your logo. And, yeah, uh, I think it looks really deceptively simple. Like there's only gonna be sort of six different logos you could design, but actually it does loads of stuff. I, I sat playing with it for, for ages. Oh um, yeah. I was actually wow. thinking we could challenge our listeners to make us a hipster logo for the Geekly Chronicles. That's not a bad Between idea. Between now and the end of the show. Yeah. Why not? Go ahead. Head over to hipsterlogogenerator.com. See if you can create a hipster Geekly logo. And share it with us. Share it with us. Send it in a tweet at GKLYCO. Uh, drop a link in our chat room. Uh, you can also get in touch on Facebook if... if the if mood just takes thing. you. If we're um, even monitoring it. If, <laughs> we'll, I'm sure we are. Maybe, probably. Um, and uh, yeah, let us know if uh, if you can create a, a hipster logo for the Geekly Chronicles. We'll be, uh, we'll be tweeting out the best ones. Hmm. And, uh, and we may offer a prize. We may. We will talk about later in the show hmm. because today is a very special day. It is a very special day. As, uh, but more about that. As I you think. will come to discover <laughs> as as the show goes on, yeah, I'm I'm still trying to design a a hipster logo uh, myself, and I I appear to have broken it. Oh dear! Um, <laughs> yeah, because you, you choose a shape, and then you have to choose things to, to kind of add to your shape. Yeah. So, so there's something called swag. Yes. Which is which is kind of adding things like anchors and lightning bolts and uh, hipster glasses, coffee beans. Yeah, hipster glasses. Yeah, that's kind. Of, that's got quite a geekly vibe. It does. It does. Um, and but, then there's yeah. a. The, I love it. You can add some swag, and then it hits you to let's personalize this shiz, <laughs> and then you add some pizzazz at the end, <laughs> which I. So, uh, so I enjoy. What's, a lot. Uh, what's per okay? So personalizing it is where we add names and and what have you, um, and then the pizzazz. I think that's. Uh, taking quite a while to load here on my machine it's Maybe we're it appears to just too be much like traffic to hipster logo generator.com <laughs> it seems um, to be colors and stuff and images yeah Ooh. background images oh there's there's proper like there's a record shop there's a proper hipster thing oh and you can make it blurry as well that's that's properly hipster oh oh i'm gonna have some fun with this <laughs> <laughs> so uh, while we design hipster versions of the uh, the Geekly logo, we do encourage you to do the same and send them in. 
and uh, we'll have a look at those a bit later on in the show. Uh, let's uh, let's find out exactly how hipstery our audience is. Mm. It's uh, something I don't know if I want to know. No. But uh, we'll find out anyway. Either way. When this baby hits 88 decibels per hour, you're going to hear some serious stuff. So it's been a strange old week. It has. It definitely has. A when, lot of, when, isn't it? Yes. A lot of the news this week has been uh, political. Um, so sort of steering around that. Emoji. I do have a soft spot for emoji. Yes. As, as I think do we all mm-hmm. here on the Geekly team. <laughs> uh, it, it was World Emoji Day on Wednesday, apparently. Um, and uh, Pizza Hut had an interesting yeah. way to celebrate. They did. By completely rewriting their menu. Yes. Um, With emoji. So, and and I'm, I'm struggling here to... Well, some of the things I can figure out what they are. Yeah. Um, I think we've, we've probably tweeted a, a link to this, this news story, which has yeah. pictures from, from the menu, if you want to take a look. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I can kind of work out the potato skins, because there's a picture of a, a potato followed by some cheese. Yeah. And, and so I'm, I'm guessing that's what that is. Oh, or is that the the chips? Oh, that's a good point. It yes, could and then be, the next one must have, must have bacon on them because of the little pig emoji. Yeah, that's very true. Um, they, uh, oh, I see. So the American hot pizza you can get from the uh, from Pizza Hut is is a little fire emoji and the American flag, which is very clever. Um, but yeah, so uh, six Pizza Hut restaurants across the UK have apparently changed their menu. Um, I am not getting what the picture of a chicken, a waving hand and a cup of tea might be. Oh, that is. I've just seen that as well. That's very confusing. I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway. um, yeah, but we, we have tweeted a link to this article in the in the Manchester Evening News because uh, the the um, Fountain Street restaurant in Manchester is uh, one of the ones that has changed their menu over. Uh, so so do have a look and see if you can work out which. Uh, food item is which uh it's certainly proving very difficult for us here in the studio Mm -hmm. but you've got until sunday um i believe uh to go and experience experience. one of these menus yeah the restaurants are i believe in uh london uh manchester liverpool birmingham edinburgh and one other that I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> we did have the list somewhere. So we, we did will find that out for you. Um, uh, yeah, but there's only there's only six of them doing this. Uh, so so do get on down and have a look. We did uh, ask a roving reporter, a roving reporter, <laughs> a uh, a friend of the show, to head down to uh, their local pizza hut in Edinburgh uh, on Wednesday, possibly Thursday. I can't remember. And uh, and find out about this this menu change malarkey, but they didn't seem to have uh, the new menus in Edinburgh, which was slightly disappointing. Yeah, that was a real shame. Um, would have been good to see them in the wild. It would have, uh, but it's it's happening according to this because the Manchester Evening News seems to think so. So it is at least happening in Manchester. So if you're close by, go have some yeah. emoji pizza. Yep. Go uh, go see if you can decipher the menu. If you can't, the one with words on is still available. But you have to ask for it. Mm. So, uh, so yeah. The, do, you, do you admit defeat and ask <laughs> for the words menu or do you just pick emoji you like the look of and hope for the best? Well, I want some chicken wave tea. <laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I would be interested to find out. Um, Cardiff Queen Street was the other restaurant. Uh, I've uh, I've just googled quickly. Um, so yeah, that's that's well, what's I think going my on. My parents were in Wales on uh, on Wednesday. So I should have sent ah, them down there. Yeah, I didn't think. Yeah. Well, that's that's what they're doing. Go have a look. Yeah. Speaking of food, as we so often mm-hmm. are on this program, <laughs> it's positively an obsession. Yes. Uh, so food being delivered by drone. Yeah, that happened this week. Yeah. Uh, It was Mablethorpe Beach in Lincolnshire, uh, where a drone successfully delivered. The the drone company that did it said it was the first food drone delivery to successfully happen. Um, And I don't don't know how... uh, 
the first ice cream delivery on a beach to successfully right, happen okay. to narrow it down because <laughs> uh, food has been delivered by drone before. Um, but it says two cones were launched from the Rock and Ices kiosk on Mablethorpe Seafront uh, after an order was placed using a phone app. Oh, we have a nice image there of a, a 99 mother flake. Yeah. The look of it. <laughs> uh, there's... Um, so it seems that this um, this drone uh, has been fitted with, with three GPS sensors for additional safety and can carry a weight of 1.2 kilograms, the equivalent of 10 ice creams. Wow. That is a lot of ice cream. You could be having a proper party on the beach and yeah. order your ice creams. Have it, have them shipped in by drone. Yeah, I can see that becoming a popular thing. Hmm. To be honest, drone ice cream by drone, especially if you're on a really busy beach and like you've got a good spot by the sea and you don't want to lose it by getting up and going to the ice cream kiosk. Hmm. You just tap your app. Actually, for small groups on the beach, I can see that being a much bigger thing because yeah, mm. losing your spot would be would be a pain. Yeah. And also sitting on the beach on your own while somebody else goes to get the ice cream. Is, it's a bit, is boring, a bit boring, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, nobody to gossip with. Yeah. Um, although lots of people on the beach and lots of ice creams on drones, mm. that could lead potential to for potential stickiness. Yes. When drone, there's a drone... Ice cream crashes. Yeah. Yes. Um, hopefully... Hopefully, they will work out a solution if this becomes popular. Mm. Um, the operator said that the delivery service is still at the testing stage, but it could be rolled out from the f- in the future if permission from the Civil Aviation Authority is granted. That's quite a big if. It is quite a big if. But, you know, fingers crossed, someone at the CAA wants ice cream by drone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a video of it happening on BBC News uh, that I would love to play you, but it has no sound. Mm. Um Although I imagine the sound would just be like little drone grrr, noises, yeah, drone noise, and then, drone ooh, noises, and, ooh. and somebody gets the ice cream. <laughs> uh, but y- you can see it fly from the the kiosk with its little. It's got like a little carrier for two cones attached to it <laughs> on a sort of uh, big pole thing, and it just hovers down in front of them for them to collect their ice creams that mm-hmm. they uh, that they have ordered. I, I. For one, welcome our robot ice cream overlords. <laughs> robot ice cream. I <laughs> I think this is great. As I can see it having elements of disaster in it if they do, you know, crash and spill ice cream everywhere and it all gets sticky and horrible. But if not, if they manage to figure that out, then... It's yeah. nice, happy news. It is. I saw, I found out the other day that in California... Uh, there is a company that will deliver you pizzas that are made and delivered and everything entirely by robots. I can't remember the name, but um, it, uh, it, you order it online, it will make it in the van using robot magic technology, and then it will drive it to your house all packed up and stuff. And uh, and deliver it to you, which wow. is awfully clever. I like it. Hmm. Um, I'm googling California pizza robot. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm also <laughs> seeing something from from Just Eat about using robots to uh, to deliver takeaway. Yeah, I'd be okay with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, I, the only thing that I'm not sure about is how do you know when it's arrived? Obviously, it can't knock on the door. That's very true. I guess it would have to, like, text you or something. Yeah. Although um, I have been known to miss delivery drivers calling me on my phone because yeah. I'm not expecting it. I'm just Usually because you're doing a, a uh, fortnightly <laughs> radio show <laughs> at the because, time. Yeah, I've got my phone on mute because, well, you, you don't want to hear delivery drivers calling me during the show. No. Um, but I, the idea of more and more robots bringing me food is something I think I can get behind. Yeah, I, I, mean, I like. I wouldn't mind a little. Although there's there's like a curb outside my house, so would uh, a little mm. robot be able to kind of climb the curb? Climb the curb and sort of bring it towards. Yeah, the because right now wall. I don't have to step outside the house to receive my takeaway. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Whereas I might actually have Whereas to. if it's step outside, can't get over the little thing up onto your doormat, to, then to uh, open the robot. Yeah. <laughs> step outside to open the robot. Things That's presumably I never thought I would say. <laughs> <laughs> presumably what will come up in the text message is like <laughs> Catherine, your takeaway is here. Please step outside to open the robot. <laughs> anyway, anyway <yes. laughs> moving swiftly on. Uh we here in the UK 
have had a lot of politics happen to us recently. Oh, haven't we just? Uh, what with this whole European Union thing that happened that we're still not talking about. And, and then uh, Prime Minister resigning yep, because of the thing. The thing. And us getting a new one um, as of like yeah. two days ago. And, and that happened so much quicker than we thought. We yep. thought that was going to be three kind of September. So. But and it was like three days. Here she is. Yeah. Uh, but Theresa May is now the Prime Minister of mm -hmm. the United Kingdom. And, uh, well, it's it's been seen as a as a as uh, an achievement for the UK to have its second female Prime Minister, mm -hmm. but has also raised a lot of interesting questions about the media. Because uh, I don't know if anyone listening to the show ever saw anything that the media said about Samantha Cameron, who is uh, David Cameron's wife, our ex-Prime Minister, but uh, there has been a uh, an interesting story this week about what it would be like if people wrote about Theresa May's husband the way they wrote about David Cameron's wife. Mm. And yet, yeah, this is something that I suppose I often pick up on. You know, what if we talked about men in the same way um, as we often talk about as we often talk about women, and it just kind of highlights the ridiculousness. Um, so BuzzFeed. Um, you know, gotta love them. Um, I've, I've done a, a <laughs> piece do. on, yeah, exactly that. If the media wrote about Theresa May's husband the way they write about Samantha Cameron, uh, so number one, obviously, they would be really keen to point out when he shows off his waist. I mean, who wouldn't yeah. want to talk about that? Yeah. So, for um, example, Philip May shows off tiny waist in a navy blue two piece. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, they would they would uh, want to to make something of adventurous wardrobe choices. Oh, I'm sure they would. So, for example, um, the light blue tie Ooh. that he's been seen choosing. Yes, mm -hmm. that is that is very adventurous. Philip May shows off his more adventurous side with a light blue tie for another day at Conservative Party conference. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's, that is a very bold choice for, the, for day two of uh, the Conservative Party mm -hmm. conference. They would applaud him for bringing trousers to the forefront of fashion. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> they they might even hail him as the perfect party husband. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh. And uh, these are all in a wonderful BuzzFeed article. Yeah. Um, and uh, and the great thing is, if you click through, you can see some of the words in the, in the, uh, the headlines of each thing are blue because they point to a link of every time these actual stories have actually been written about Samantha Cameron. Oh. It boggles the mind. It does. Why we need My to? My mind is uh, boggled. Why we need to know how bold Samantha Cameron's outfit is, or adventurous Samantha Cameron's outfit is, because because uh, a blue tie, Philip, is not uh, not what I would call the most zany fashion choice. I mean, they might say that with his enviable looks and lifestyle, he has it all. <laughs> For example, <laughs> Philip May, fifty-eight and unusually beautiful. A banker <laughs> and the husband of a rising political star might seem to have it all. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't make it up. You really couldn't make it up. There's uh, a parody of a Guardian article here saying, uh, should Philip May give up his day job? Because, you know, should he have one if he's married to the prime minister? Indeed. Surely, you know, being the uh, the prime minister's husband is, is job enough. Job enough. The, uh, the Metro actually uh, took it upon themselves to write the article. Uh, oh, Theresa fantastic. May's husband steals the show in sexy navy suit as he starts new life as first man. <laughs> wow. And and it really is. What still grates me about this is even though they've done a lovely parody of, you know, the kind of articles we write about, about, um, you know, wives and, and things. Mm -hmm. There's still been no effort made to find out what actual clothes he's wearing. They describe <laughs> them like he's wearing a suit. Yeah. And he's wearing some shoes. But they don't find out, you know, who was the designer, where did he buy it from, like they would if it was a woman. That's it's it's almost true. like that cliche uh, that you would get maybe in um, perhaps a crime drama where, you know, a car has mm. sped away from the scene and they ask, you know, they ask a woman, what kind of car was it? And she says, oh, it was blue. You know, yeah, that kind like, of stereotype. Yeah. It's like someone is describing his clothes. Oh, he was wearing a suit as opposed yeah. to, well, who made it? Was yes, it a Paul Smith a... suit? Was it a... Armani suit? Yeah. 
people need to know. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> Just tell me what he's wearing, goddammit. The, <laughs> the media have decided people do need to know. Um but it does. But they're not doing their research in the they same way that they would if it was if it yeah. was Sam Cam, I think. But uh, it does highlight just how ridiculous it is. <laughs> it that, really does. That this is this is the way we write about people who are married to people in power, mm. and particularly women who are married to uh, people to people in, in power. power, because because uh, it is it is very silly as that Metro article which we uh, which we have tweeted out yeah. for your There's enjoyment. There's also some lovely tweets uh, on there as well. Um, mm. <laughs> which, yeah, I, I couldn't really get enough of that, to be honest. Um, <laughs> it has been very so, entertaining. Yeah, we've definitely been politicsed this week. Yes. And the weeks previously. <laughs> <laughs> so a little light relief is very welcome. It is. Um, and if anyone can find out where Philip May gets his suits and shoes and stuff, then... I uh, need to know. Catherine wants to know, people. <laughs> and to be fair, they're not bad suits. I wouldn't mind knowing as well. Um, so that's that's what's been happening this week. Uh also, things have been given Twitter accounts. Things we have. said at the well, start of the show. I think things are always given Twitter accounts. Yes, I remember. That's true. Um, I remember. Uh, what was it? The the first series of the TV show Broadchurch. Uh, somebody steps on a slug. Sorry for the <laughs> spoiler there. I mean, it's right. not. It's not a, hu- a huge spoiler. It won't ruin the plot or anything for anyone. But um, and within seconds, somebody had started a Twitter account for the Broadchurch slug. So I was in no way surprised. Um, kind of during the 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 Euro 2016 football final when uh, somebody created, well, multiple somebodies created Twitter accounts for the moth that that landed on Cristiano Ronaldo. Yes. Um, Yeah. Uh, I I think I I did a search and I counted at least 60 Twitter accounts for that moth. Wow. Mm -hmm. That is a lot of Twitter accounts for one moth. It is probably my favourite thing that's got a Twitter account um, in the last week or so um, has been an escaped lynx, a mm, lynx that yes. escaped from Dartmoor Zoo. Yes, I saw that story. I'm uh, I'm interested to know what the escaped lynx is tweeting. It's at Dartmoor Lynx if you want to see the uh, the inner workings uh, in the mind of a, a lynx that escapes from a zoo. It seems that the lynx kind of arrived one day uh, and then by the next day it, had, it sort of tunnelled it dug its way out of its enclosure <laughs> wow. uh, and had kind of gone on the run. But I don't know, Dartmoor seems a sort of appropriate place to find a, a lynx yeah. prowling around. There's um, one tweet here from at Dartmoor Lynx that says, Wanted, zoo escapee seeks room to rent. <laughs> <laughs> Willing to share, good sense of humour, etc. Um, possibly short let. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag lynx on the loose. I'm trying to look for, for other tweets that mm. um, have kind of tickled me in the last <laughs> in the last few days. It's tweeted about the book One Night in the Zoo uh, quite a lot, appropriately. The, the links has been getting in on the politics as well. Yeah. Uh, thanks to all the many followers who tweeted ask, asking after my welfare today. Still a happy links, but remain upset I didn't get a cabinet post. Yeah. To be fair, if oh, I was an escape links, yeah. It's, it's very hard on zoo animals, the reshuffle. They mm. uh, almost none of them have been considered for positions in Theresa May's new cabinet. Also, being given a Twitter account this week is a cash machine, a as cash uh, machine. as we were saying at the beginning. So, um, the Tea in the Park music festival happened uh, recently, and a cash machine. They have those uh, portable ones that they take to these sorts of things, uh, and one of them was stolen. Uh, f- uh, from the from the festival site, and police are looking for it, and they say there is a significant amount of cash gone. Ooh. But uh, the Twitter account at T in the Park ATM uh, says it is lost somewhere in Perthshire. A couple of blokes abducted and stuck me in a tent. There are lots of people outside, and I can hear music. Help! <laughs> <laughs> and it's tweeting about how it's uh, how it's still tied up in the back of a van. Uh, can someone come and find me and take out some cash as soon as possible? I'm suffering from withdrawal symptoms. Oh. Oh, dear. There is a, wa- a reward available for whoever can find me. I have money. <laughs> come and help me out of here and I'll tell you Calvin Harris's PIN number. <laughs> uh. Oh. The, the, the account does seem to have sort of uh, died quite quickly. Mm. Um, unlike the Dartmoor Lynx, who is still... 
uh, still at tweeting large. <laughs> and at large. Uh, th- this one was obviously created on the on the eighth of July and seems to have not tweeted again um, mm. since, since the like since the twelfth. Yeah. So sort of five days of of amusing tweets there for you. Mm. But uh, but still, yeah. it's very entertaining that these things get given Twitter accounts, perhaps unnecessarily. You might argue, uh, but. I, we do enjoy we enjoy a silly Twitter account here, don't we? We mm. like we like a bot. My little tumbling, fumbling heart, rather. Yes. Rather <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. That sounds like your country song. My tumbling, your fumbling. tumbling, fumbling heart. Yeah. You're listening to the Geekly Chronicles. It's like your birthday, only there's no cake or presents. Joining us now, excitingly, from all the way in another country. <gasps> it's Kez. Hello. Oh yeah. How's How it you? going? Eh, not bad, thanks. Oh, good. It's it's kind of warm here. Warm always makes me feel kind of slow. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what the temperature's like in the UK today, but we're kind of used to a summer of what, maybe between eighteen and twenty-two degrees. If we're lucky. Yeah, if we're lucky. Yeah, yeah it's about kind of thirty-four, thirty-five out right now. Ooh, Ooh. that's that is... quite. Toasty, quite humid. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm slow, but I've got a nice cold drink here. So uh, you know, not doing too badly. Well, that sounds nice. Right. We were going to talk about Pokemon Go. Mm. Yes. Okay. Have either of you played it? No. No. Do In either of you like Pokemon? I've never really been exposed to much Pokemon. No, I, I have to say, I'm kind of the same. I so I played Pokemon. Probably for the first time in, I believe, Series 2, when you made me play it, Kez. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think I have played it since, other than another time when you made me play it. Um, yeah, now, I, I remember you playing Pokemon, was it the original Pokemon Blue on a uh, Game Boy emulator on... on uh, on a TV yes. uh, a couple of weeks ago, and yeah. you were truly awful at it. I think it so... was Pokemon Red, actually. But the, okay. the my, my terribleness at Pokemon still stands. That would probably be yeah, you were you were terrible. Yeah, I was. Um, so so you want to talk about Pokemon Go, but uh, neither of you have have ever really played Pokemon, and neither well, of you have Pokemon Go. This is why we are relying on you as our Pokemon expert. Ah, well, uh, let me be Professor Oak for you for a few minutes then, which is a joke uh-huh. that neither of you will get. You are correct. Um, <laughs> you are right about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, Pokemon Go as a phenomenon has been sweeping the world, really, as uh, new regions have come online. It's it's an app. Uh, it's a game. But it uh, uses augmented reality, and it's location-based. So the really fun thing about it is that rather than it being like a traditional Pokemon game where you're in a town and you kind of go around and catch Pokemon and train them with this. You're actually, you're in your location and you can go around trying to find Pokemon. Um, and so, I mean, I'm sat looking out at a parking lot right now. Um, and uh, just a few short hours ago, I was running around this parking lot with some friends trying to catch Pokemon. I, I caught a Bulbasaur. Um, there were plenty of other Pokemon around, uh, as well. And so the, the aim of the game with Pokemon Go really is to catch and evolve your Pokemon to, to level up and to be able to, to go and um, take control of gyms and things like that. So it takes the principle of Pokemon for those that are quite familiar with it and brings it into the real world. Um, but it also gets people out and about. I know loads of people that have been uh, traveling around far more than uh, than they ever have before. I mean, I've had quite a lot of exercise recently um, just off the back of having Pokemon Go installed, which is great. And it really inspires people to try and, and uh, you know, one-up themselves to really be the very best, like perhaps they, they never were. Uh-huh. Um, really <laughs> seeing now that catching them is, is the real test. Uh-huh. And eventually, with updates to the game, training them will be their cause as well. <laughs> um, and being yeah. here in the US, obviously having got the game when I was in the UK, I've traveled across the land, really, searching far and wide. Ah. Um, and I'm really hoping that by the time the game evolves a bit more, I'll be able to teach Pokemon to understand the power that's inside. Are we doing this whole, the whole song? Is that? 
Well, the rest of it's just saying the word Pokemon quite a bit, so no. Good. Or possibly yes. <laughs> um, so, so I, I kind of I get the going out and the looking for Pokemon bit. I'm, I'm really quite tempted by that. Um, but what I can't get my head around is what is a Pokemon gym? So, I mean, traditionally in the game and in the in the kind of original story of Pokemon, you in order to gain badges to to get into the kind of most elite battles you you will go along and you will fight with the pokemon at a, a gym and each town had a gym and a gym leader that you would battle against to, to get a badge from that gym and it's kind of a similar concept in pokemon go you know people can take control of gyms and different colors there are different teams in pokemon go uh can also take control of gyms so it's uh so is it a bit like being the mayor of a place on swarm a little bit so i don't know if you ever played the game ingress um which was a, a similar kind of uh real world based game it was a, it took a, a, some of the concepts of swarm being around in, in different places but rather than checking in, you kind of gained control of portals in, in the real world. Um, Pokemon Go is actually made by the same people that made Ingress. So it's a very similar concept in that there are, you know, gyms at particular locations. There are also Pokestops that you can go to and, and pick up new Pokeballs and, and various different things like incense to attract Pokemon to your location. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you go and you, you can get lots of uh, lots of points and things for, for going to different gyms. And, of course, this is really just the start of the game. The game will be evolving over time. So, um, you know, more people, more, more features will be added. People will be able to do more with the game as well, um, like trade items and Pokemon and things uh, as well. And some Pokemon are rarer than others. So, uh, you know, you, you go around and try and look for the the rarer Pokemon that you have, um, you know, many people will just walk around and find they've got a million Rattatas around them, which is, is great. But uh, really what you want is to, uh, to to find something a bit more rare. So so are there particular Pokemons that are very rare? There are. I mean, I'm not an expert on this because I've, I've really not uh, not a particularly high level in the game yet. There are some, some certainly some of the friends I'm, I'm out in the US with this week are a much higher level than I am. Um, and, you know, have far more of an idea of what's rare and what's not rare. But there are there are certainly some Pokemon you see um, lots of. There are some you don't see many of. And some of them at the moment you can only hatch from eggs. Now, eggs you you can pick up along your travels, but then you have to walk a certain distance to be able to hatch them. So I've got mm -hmm. a couple of eggs in my uh, my virtual backpack right now, but I haven't done enough kilometers of walking to be able to actually have them hatch yet. Yeah. So it's a really interesting way of saying if you want the if you want the really rare stuff, you need to get out there and do some walking. Yes, um, I'm seeing a story here on the BBC that uh, number ten Downing Street has a new resident in the form of a Pikachu. Uh, <laughs> While BBC reporter Adam Fleming was out doing a story about uh, Theresa May moving into Downing Street, essentially, uh, he opened the game up on his phone and uh, and caught a Pikachu. <laughs> Excellent. Well, there there have been a lot of new things moving into Downing Street this week, and uh, Pikachu being an electric type Pokemon is actually one of the least shocking things to be happening in in Downing Street this week. <laughs> but um. <laughs> It's all, I also feel like Pikachu being able to only say the words Pika Pika could potentially make a far better foreign secretary for the UK. But uh, we'll, we'll have to see how that one goes with time. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, there's been some fantastic kind of funny stories around this. Um, oh, well, funny from the outside, possibly, but, but not maybe if you're the person who owns a home that used to be a church um, mm. and... Uh, so, and has sort of unwittingly become the owner of a Pokemon gym. Um, so <laughs> this is a, a fellow who's, who's found people just kind of showing up at his house, driving slowly by, parking outside, sitting on the bench across the road and kind of hanging out at, at his home. Um, I, th I think the, the game maybe chooses places based on, I suppose, things which are certain types of location on a map, maybe. And uh, and it's picked it thinking it was a church when it hasn't been a church for some years. Um, and it's sort of being a bit awkward for for him. 
Oh, to be honest with you, one of my life around. goals is to accidentally become the owner of a Pokemon gym. <laughs> yeah, I actually said, because in this article, it, it, he was kind of saying, you know, it could affect, you know, it could affect the value of his house, you know, the, mm. people wouldn't want it. And I was thinking it could actually go completely the other way. Some people might think, well, living in a Pokemon gym would be their ideal. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah, totally. And let's face it, we're at a peak of users right now. The hardcore people that keep using it are... Uh, are not going to be the same kind of levels and the numbers of people that are using it right now. So unless he was planning to sell his house like tomorrow, he'll probably be fine. Yeah, mm. I imagine, you know, a year from now, yeah, there will be far less uh, Pokemon gym traffic uh, on his yeah. rails. Well, I hope so. That's probably the only way I'm going to be able to level up in the game. So. <laughs> <laughs> mm. oh. um, yeah, so the, then we've also seen some other um, stories uh Things like people going to dangerous places or potentially mm. dangerous places. Yeah. Um, some children um, here in the UK got stuck in some caves 100 feet underground. Oh, yes. I remember you telling me about this before the show, uh, about wow. the, uh, the yeah, mines having in to, Wiltshire. Uh, having to get rescued by um, by some, by some the, the fire service. Um, yeah, I, I think it's almost Darwinism at work. You know, you, you should know that even if there might be Pokemon down there, you probably shouldn't go. Yeah. Um, maybe... I mean, it's it's a bit kind of, um, you know, it's human nature to kind of weigh up risk and go, eh, it'll probably be fine. Like <laughs> um, Pokemon Go and Drive. Um, yeah, but, uh, don't do I've that. Been, I've been witness to here in the US by, with, wow. a, with a number of people that I've, uh, I've been seeing while I've been out here. Oh, um, yeah. Just, you know, driving along, open the Pokemon Go app and uh, see how that goes. And, you know, nine times out of ten, yeah, probably fine. But then, you know, there's that one time out of ten where suddenly it's the biggest car accident in the entire East Coast, you know. So it's, um, I think, you know, it's it's all about judgment, isn't it? I think it is a bit of Darwinism at work. I think, you know, you've got to be really dumb to, like, uh, think oh hey i'll just abseil down this lift shaft to hell um but <laughs> at the same time you know i think people are always gonna think yeah i can probably get away with that so we, um, we i even saw two men uh, in san diego uh fell more than 50 feet off a cliff God. while playing the game wow yeah i think i think the key advice is just look up every now and then <laughs> yes. yeah, just yeah every every few steps glance yeah. up glance up see what's in front of you See what you're about to step off. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, I can't. I can't believe that. But it but is. Hey. It is taking the world by storm, and uh, now I can kind of understand the appeal. Now it's been explained to me exactly how this works. I mean, I am very bad at Pokemon, as we have proved on several occasions. But I think, oh, Chris, I you're think just very bad at video games in general. So well, don't, yeah. um, don't don't feel like it's the Pokemon singling you out. They will, they'd probably they'd probably love you if they actually met you. I think I'm actually <laughs> I quite tempted so. by this, and I think the only thing that has stopped me getting it since it's been available in the UK is I haven't really been out of the house. I think if I'd been going out a bit more, I would have I would probably have downloaded it by now. Yeah. But here's the great thing: sometimes Pokemon will just pop up and appear in your house as well. Yeah. I remember, so, you know. I remember that's, that has definitely happened to you, Kez, before, because you've texted me and been like, oh, got a Pokemon. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, yes. The, my first Pokemon, the first one that I caught, uh, I was at work and it was actually sat under my boss's desk. So I was there kind <laughs> of with, with my phone oh, pointing my it under my boss's desk, kind of ominously um, looking for a Pokemon. So, yep. yeah, I mean, po Pokemon responsibly. Yes. Um, is that, but other than that, it's... Is that your favourite place that you found a Pokemon? Um, no. So I, I've i been travelling around a little bit in the US and I was in Washington, D.C. a couple of days ago and I was, uh, I was Pokemoning around um, the... The mall around there, so the um, the mall, the where a lot of the monuments and things are. So I caught many Pokemon outside the White House. Uh, <laughs> I caught one just outside the United States Senate and around Congress. Uh, and there was one right at the base of the Washington uh, monument that I was able to catch as well. So yeah. I've uh, I've caught some nice Pokemon uh, in places that uh, certainly I don't visit frequently. So it's mm. nice nice to do that. Very Pokemon cool. Pokemon at monuments or. Pokemon monuments. 
Yes. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, worth a try. Scattermoon in the chat room says uh, she's actually late to this show uh, listening because she was out in the park playing Pokemon Go with people. <laughs> Well, that's just not acceptable. Yeah, I mean, yeah. come on. We do have a mobile stream. Yeah, yeah. seven o'clock. Play it to your friends. Why not? <laughs> and speaking of things that are new and big and exciting yes. this week, and everyone's talking about them. Uh, things that are new and big and exciting this week uh, is includes Ghostbusters, um, which, uh, which has come out recently. Now, this week, the new Ghostbusters film came out. Uh, we went to see it on opening day, and wow, it was just spectacular. Wasn't it good? Yep. Uh, even from the first scenes, I was squeeing in my seat. Ew. Ew. Yeah, I thought it was a really great reboot. I liked all the ghosts and stuff. That's, uh, that's detailed. Thanks yeah. for that, Chris. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, what I really loved about it was when... Oh, yeah, and... Uh... But remember the bit where... And then Bill Murray... <laughs> And it turns out that she was... <laughs> oh, yeah. Just uh, after the part where the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man was... Uh... Yeah, and and then Chris Hemsworth with the... And the... And I'm just not sure anyone saw that coming. <laughs> I know I didn't. Nope. So, yeah, Ghostbusters uh, came out and, uh, and we hope you enjoyed that. Uh... Spoiler free. Spoiler free. Uh... Description. Yes. Our thoughts. <laughs> Uh, but it, it is a very good film to, to non-spoiler it for you. I really enjoyed it. I, I, it. I really enjoyed it as well. It, it was a lot of fun. Um, I might go see it again. Yeah, I'm very I happy about I'll it. I'll go see it again too. Um, yeah. Yeah. Very, very enjoyable film. Uh, <laughs> we don't really have a lot more to say that isn't, uh, that isn't going to spoil it. Captain Kirk is making a podcast. Why is he making a podcast? That's a very good question. Today is also Gummy Worm Day. Who knew? Well, obviously we knew. Yes, but we did have to Google it. We did. Um, we did. We did a lot of kind of searching around for these days. Yes. Before the series started, and when we saw Gummy Worm Day, well, well, you know, who can resist food, really? Indeed. Especially not any of us. But um, so we tried to look for some some gummy worms, uh, but we had no success. But I believe you, Kez did have a little more success in your, your search for worms. Yeah, I'm actually in the, the country where gummy worms were first discovered um, back in uh, 1873. Um, <laughs> it was quite an interesting story, actually. They, they were doing some digging and uh, they just found these, uh, these jelly things in the ground and they were quite tasty. So uh, they're now, uh, it's, it's a few states' biggest export, actually, uh, digging uh -huh. up these, uh, these jellied worms. Uh, so but I, like I have to say a huge thanks. Or? I have to say a, a huge thanks to regular listener uh, Kaylee for for actually picking these worms up for me. Uh, but I have here uh, a packet of um, packet of gummy worms. Uh, I've been looking at the ingredients, and some of these ingredients uh, you can't actually get in the UK, um, uh -huh. as, uh, as some of them are actually controlled substances. So, okay. you know, there are there are dietary differences between our two nations. Mm -hmm. But this is true. here I am with a gummy worm, and I've never actually had one of these before. So it's going to be a very interesting thing to try. Yeah, I've been thinking about it, and I'm not sure if I've ever had a, a gummy worm. No, I can't think that I have either, to be honest. Yeah, well, should I should I go ahead and try it? Should I describe yeah. it to you? Give yeah, it a go. Do we, do, are they in different colours or flavours? Yeah, there, there are a few different colours here. I've got, um, I mean, I've got a couple of different packets. I've got sour bright ones. I'm going to try those in a minute. Ooh, but in, in front good. of me right now, I've got a uh, a red and uh, a red and white one, and I've got a red and green one, and I've got there's an orange and yellow one. Um, so you know that's. Uh, that's kind of cool. I've actually got uh, Kaylee, who brought the the gummy bears for me, is now out the window of the room I'm in, uh, <laughs> watching me eat these gummy bears. So which uh, which colour should I eat first? Oh, green. Apparently, I'm being told I should eat the green one first. <laughs> All right, give this a go. Okay. You ready? <laughs> I think so. I'm I'm eating the gummy one. <laughs> <laughs> we we probably shouldn't make you talk with your mouth full. Possibly but, not, but we will. <laughs> so, so what flavour do we think grey green is? <laughs> It tastes like uh, it's quite difficult to describe. It tastes kind of like um, 
You know, you know that stuff that you get that cleans floors. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So it yeah. tastes a little bit like that, but kind it's of sort sweeter. Of pine so fresh. It's, it's like someone <laughs> took the. Um, it's like someone someone took like uh, an antibacterial floor cleaner and added some uh, sugar and spice and, and a few all things nice to it. I seem to remember that's how Listerine was invented. <laughs> well, I've got a, I've got a red and and uh, kind of see throughy white one here, so I'm going to try that as well. That's usually um, a good sort of flavour combo for me yeah. on, on things like gummy bears. Yeah, so those colours mm. are generally good. Yeah, this one's more like window cleaner than floor cleaner. All oh, right. Ooh. The difference between your sort of flash and your Windex kind of. <laughs> yeah. All right, I've got uh, I've got an almost entirely orange yellowy one here, so I'm going to give that one a go as well. Uh, this one's. Right, I'm, I'm trying it now. guessing it's supposed to be orange flavour, so I'm guessing it might smell like sort of uh, will taste like kind of hob cleaner. <laughs> you sometimes get mm. those in orange varieties. Yeah, no, this tastes more like hand soap. Ah, oh, hand soap. Interesting. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. So not unpleasant. I've got no. these sour ones here as well. Um, Hopefully I'm not they'll taste less. Sour I yeah. think I've been things. most excited by sour. Um, I like sour sweets. Probably taste a bit. But less I've got. Soapy. Oh, there's a whole whole wodge of them here. I've Ooh. got um, orange and green. I've got blue and pink. Uh, which ones should I go for first here? Well, I've got one that's yellow and red that looks a bit like a I nuclear explosion contained within a gummy one. Yeah. Have a go on the, the blue and pink one, says Catherine. Blue and pink. All right. Okay, here we go. This one looks a little bit like um, prescription medication tablets, so I'm going to give this one a go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can... I'm picturing... It's not it. actually that sour. Ah, that's disappointing. I'm disappointed for you. Oh, I got, there it goes. Ah! Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> yep, that sounds like it's getting, uh, <laughs> getting <laughs> sour. <laughs> Sourer by the second. Right. Wow, well, that was... Um, Bracing? That was an experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now, I wonder what would happen if I put quite a lot of them in my mouth at once. I think for the purposes of good Some radio. Sort of seizure, maybe? <laughs> so if, I, if I've got... So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six... Let's go for 10. 7, Ooh. 8, 9, 10. Now, so I've got 10 sour gummy worms. I'm going to try and put them all in my mouth at once. We can't recommend that you do this, listeners. No. But okay. cares I'm going to give it a go. It a go. <laughs> Are you ready? Count we me can... down. 3, 2, 1. Here we go. Worm. I don't. What? Those sound like fairly uncomfortable sounds. <laughs> Oh. oh gosh i don't think we'll be able to ask questions for a while yeah <laughs> there might be a recovery period oh that. dear uh, but while kez is is recovering Suffering for radio um it does remind me that i have never had a gummy worm except a gummy worm that i have made myself because when i was younger <sighs> you used to be able to buy this thing um that was like a make your own sweets set and it had all sorts of like chemicals and uh, like food colorings and sugars and stuff in it most of which are probably illegal now but uh that one of the different times different yeah times. one of the molds that you could uh that you could make your sweets into was worms so i have i have made my own gummy worms in the past and i seem to remember i made sour ones as well because sour sweets are very nice um and Need uh, water I had a similar I'm experience. Not surprised. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing, Kes? Oh, oh, whoa. Well, I, I, I believe t- I'm on the ceiling. Yeah. So um, uh, I might have to get someone to scrape me off of this in, in a moment. But yes. that was uh, that was an experience. Uh-huh. Um, it feels a little bit like I may have just poured an unknown quantity of chemicals into my body. Yeah. I think that probably is what has happened. I think so. Oh, we're my nervous teeth for are you. sweating. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Although, for reasons of morbid curiosity more than anything else, I, I must ask you to bring some of these worms back with you from the US if, you know, they don't take them off you at customs for being weapons of mass destruction or whatever. I will endeavour to pack <laughs> the rest of these gummy worms into my luggage when I, I come home. Uh, just because I feel like you ought to experience what I just experienced, yes. which <laughs> I can o- I can only say is a bit like a cross between rapture 
and uh, <laughs> Satanism. Okay. Wow. That's a very potent flavour. Uh, <laughs> Quite biblical combination. With a yes. hint of cherry. It's like, it's like how I imagine Satan would taste if cooked with cherry. <laughs> sort of, okay. sort of um, uh, broiled in, in cherry coke, yeah. perhaps. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, Satan Slow broiled. So that we could have uh, sort of pulled mm. Satan. Yeah, Satan, pulled Satan broiled in cherry coke. I think I've seen that on Heston's mm. menu. <laughs> yeah, slow, slow cooked Satan. It's, yeah, uh, it's a thing. It's, it's a new thing, yeah. Uh, so during my gummy worm research, uh, I actually discovered quite a terrifying thing. Mm, yes, And this I was these this. giant gummy worms. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and uh, I think that the premise was, the you know, how do you make something that's awesome even more awesome? And that's to make it sort of 281 times more massive. I don't know if that's the exact number. I, c- I can't remember now. But these gummy worms, uh, they look terrifying. Uh, yeah. We've, yeah. Uh, we've got some so links was... that we can, can tweet out to these ginormous uh, gummy worms, which, yeah. I'm just looking at it uh, now. Four I was looking at getting one. I, I was trying to get one uh, primed to me from Amazon, but it, it just wouldn't have arrived in time for the show. Mm. But the, some of the some of the giant gummy worms you see online look a lot like they belong in uh, adult stores rather than yes, food stores. Mm. There's, uh, the, I found one that is is thirty pounds plus eleven pounds delivery. Uh, it is 1.4 kilograms in wow. in weight. It is 1,361 calories, apparently. Uh, I feel like we ought to get that for the next show. Handmade in the USA, it says. So perhaps ah. uh, perhaps I should have it delivered to you while you're out there so you can bring it back. Um, yeah, actually, I might have to pay an extra baggage charge. That's quite that. a lot of weight yeah. to, to add yeah. to, uh, to, add to your baggage. luggage. <laughs> we even yeah. found that uh, one of the companies that makes these or the company that makes these, I'm not sure if there's, there's more than one, um, actually has a whole advertisement put together for for these worms. And yeah, it's it's quite it's quite the it's quite the experience to watch. It is quite the experience to watch. Yeah, that should be getting tweeted out now if anyone wants to uh, to check it out. Yes, interesting. Mm-hmm. It is really really a scary thing. The uh, certainly looking at the Amazon product pages, um, the the people holding the incredibly giant gummy worms look slightly alarmed <laughs> who wouldn't yeah to be fair um the some of the language they use to describe them is quite um and summers but uh but yeah they're, they're terrifying things and i think we're gonna have to order one for the show see Just so that we can take photos of ourselves looking alarmed yes whilst whilst holding a big sticky gummy worm yeah see yeah how- how 4,000 calories of, of gummy sugar sweet makes us feel. I think I just got that in the handful that I had. <laughs> well, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, it's uh, Apparently it's 130 calories per gummy worm. Uh, I just looked on the back of the packet. So, so that's 1,300 <laughs> calories you've just ingested there. The things I do for this show. Oh, my God. That's, that's a lot of calories. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's a very Ooh. large number. All the calories. Um, just checking in on some stuff from earlier in the show. Oh, we've had a tweet in uh, saying, <laughs> will we be able to import American gummy worms after Brexit? That is that is a good question. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm maybe. Maybe. We'll have to see what Theresa May's official position on uh, oversized gummy sweets is. Um, but other things that we have uh, have talked about in the show include our hipster logo competition we mm-hmm. have had an entry from uh, from hannah on twitter thank you hannah um and that is that is quite hipster uh, i don't know if you can see it on uh, it's your also screen, quite Catherine, geekly it is quite geekly it's got the glasses it's got the the green um so yeah keep those coming in uh from hipsterlogogenerator.com and uh, you can the, be as crazy as you like you can and the prize we will be awarding is a box of gummy worms of that course. we have found from Amazon. Um, <laughs> it is uh, it is a normal sized box of normal sized gummy worms. Don't worry, but we uh, we will have that shipped to you if we like your logo the best. Now for this week's game of geeks. So, game of geeks is here, and uh, but not as you know it. Not as you know it. Yes, this time for the first time uh, in in geekly history. We will be doing Game of Geeks, where Catherine is not the quizmaster. Yeah. Rather, 
we are handing over the uh, handing over the the baton of quiz mastery. Yes. So uh, last time, last time we game of geeks transatlantically because it has happened before. It was not hugely successful. No. So well, no, you time, ended up winning. Yeah. Well. <laughs> It was it was hugely successful for me, but uh, but it wasn't. It was a hollow victory, though. Chris. It was I mean, not it, the fairest. It, it only game. didn't work because I I was on the time delay. Yeah. So we have handed the questioning responsibility to Kez, and I have got some questions for you. <laughs> oh goody! <laughs> I am so scared. <laughs> I am also uh. very terrified by this prospect. Um, but. So, as Game of Geeks normally works then, I have a number of questions for you. Um, if you answer on the first clue, you get three points. If you answer on the second clue, you get two points. If you answer on the third clue, you get just one point. Ah, but we've got some buzzers this evening. So, uh, Chris, what, is, what noise does your buzzer make? My buzzer goes... Ah, David Cameron's uh, do do doing. I see that. Yes, yes a, a political the, uh, buzzer. <laughs> the the happy little tune he whistled to himself or hummed to himself as he uh, went back into Downing Street for the final. I would like to point out that none of those things were a whistle or a hum, but uh, we see the point. It, it's the same thing. Do do. General. Uh, Catherine, what does your buzzer do? It does this. <laughs> ah. <laughs> uh, a more so Boris Johnson sort of noise. Sort of noise. <laughs> Well, Which that is, is indeed Boris Johnson, I believe. Yes. yes, our new foreign secretary, ladies and gentlemen. The the <laughs> only <laughs> way, <laughs> the, <laughs> the only way we can describe that sound is using the words a Boris Johnson noise. Mm. Yes, uh, very much so. But yes. So, uh, with your buzzers set, are you ready for the first question of this week's Game of Geeks? Not in the slightest, but go ahead. My fingers are okay. on my buzzer, but my brain is not prepared. So let's begin. All right. Now, this first one is a film. Film. Okay. 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 So, your first clue. This film and its sequel, which took place 20 years later, feature otherworldly creatures. Oh. Well, Gather well, in. In true Game of Geeks style, I'm going to guess Ghostbusters. <laughs> Incorrect. Okay. Good. Ah. <laughs> so, so we learn at this stage in Game of Geeks that Kez may be slightly less uh, obvious in their questioning. <laughs> I'd like to point out that ghosts aren't really otherworldly creatures, are they? Well, other plainly creatures. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Would you like your second clue? <laughs> yes, please. Yes. Okay. For two points. In the original of this film, we saw the destruction of a world-famous landmark. Oh, done it. <laughs> Independence Day. Correct! Hey! <laughs> That's two points to Catherine. <laughs> Bit of beginner's luck there for the rookie. Yep. Having never played Game of Geeks before, you are storming ahead. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was nicely themed. You know, I'm, I'm in the US. I was catching Pokemon around by the landmark that got destroyed. Yeah. Hmm. Fair enough. Okay. So... Your next question. This one is a television series. TV Ooh. series, okay. Okay. Okay, so your first clue. There have been ten series of this British sci-fi to date. Oh. Oh. Do, 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 do. Chris. Red Dwarf. Correct. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm happy about okay. that. Okay. <laughs> that, was, that was easy. All right, moving on then. The next one is, again, a film. Oh. Oh, another film, okay. Okay, so your first clue for three points. This franchise has featured three films, three television series, and 17 video games since its oh, inception. Wow. Well. Ooh. Oh, goodness oh, me. That's a tricky um... one. Because there's things I'm thinking that it could be, but no, there's been more films of that or more more series of that. So, oh. I think I'm going to need a second clue. Yeah, I think I'm going to need it too. All right. The second clue for this one. The third film in the franchise was originally set to feature the original cast, but was instead a reboot with an all-female ensemble. <laughs> Christopher. Is it Ghostbusters? It is! <laughs> Congratulations. In, in true Game of Geeks 
the question really I is can't believe, video games. I can't believe I didn't get that on the first clue because I've been <laughs> reading today about the the Ghostbusters kind of cartoon series and, and things mm. that had been on TV. And, yeah, yeah so I'd, I I'd forgotten that. there was so much stuff. Like you just said, Kez, 17 video games. I'm glad that you got it on the second clue because the third clue was just we went to see it at the cinema on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, the, the pity clue. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Using, using the Catherine okay. method of question writing, mm -hmm. I see. Okay, so your next question is a book. Okay. All right. Published in 1979, this book's two lead characters worked as a reporter for the BBC and an actor, respectively. Oh. Oh, I feel like I know this. But not on that amount of information. <laughs> no, I'm drawing no. a blank. Clean Next clue. Two, please. Yep. Okay, your second clue for two points. This book features a planet-sized computer run like... Run so, run no, run no, like <laughs> oh, yeah, that, yeah, that. <laughs> Catherine. Um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Is oh, the correct answer. Cool. Two points. Wow. I still haven't okay. caught up to Chris, though, have I? Uh, there is one point between the two of you. Ooh. There is. Um, I've got more questions if you'd like to keep going. Why not? Well, it's, it's, I'm it's enjoying a, this. Continue. It's a rare opportunity. Yeah. Okay. Have fun in your, your question. Mastership. <laughs> All right. Your, your next question is a person. A person. Okay. A person. Interesting. Okay. Right. Your first clue. This dearly departed, recently departed icon is an often emotionless actor and singer. Oh, 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 oh. Do, 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 do. Alan Rickman. <laughs> is not the right answer. Nard. Oh, Boris is in. I'm going to go Catherine. with Leonard Nimoy. Leonard Nimoy is the correct Leonard answer. Leonard Nimoy. Yes. <laughs> Oh, yes. God, okay. I've forgotten Leonard Nimoy was uh, no longer with us. Okay, right. Um, your next question. Hang on, I've lost my place. There we go. <laughs> I just tried to use a touchscreen with my nose and things went terribly wrong. Ah. Um, uh, the next question is a thing. A thing? A thing. Yes. Can, can you be any more specific or is it it's a, a thing? It, it's a thing. Okay. Okay. Your first clue for three points. This historic doctrine was written in 1787 and ratified some nine months later. Chris. Uh, was it the Declaration of Independence? Incorrect. Oh. Your second Catherine is clue. pondering a buzz, but no, I don't think <laughs> she's going to go for it. Your second clue. Sorry, was Catherine offering a buzz? I no. didn't hear. She was pondering a buzz. No, I was, I was just uh, pondering, waving no, no. gently over the buzzer. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, second clue for two points. It replaced the Articles of the Confederation, which were written in 1777, oh, oh. after a half-war war in the year previously. Chris. United States Constitution. Is the correct answer. Hey! Now, <laughs> it's one of we, the documents. Yes. <laughs> I was just it's one of the American one of the other document. document. The, de <laughs> the Declaration of Independence was 1776, which oh. is a very famous date in US history. Um, Whereas in, I, I in feel, UK feel history. I feel like I should know these things being in the United yeah. States right now. Whereas in UK history, in 1776, nothing happened. Nothing, no, nothing at all. Nothing, nothing of nothing note. Nothing ever. happened. No, just it was a just, cup of tea and a The sit year down, was cancelled. Quiet year. Right. You're both on seven points, so we, we need are. a tie break. Final tie break question. Okay. Very exciting. And this is a film. Oh, okay. Oh. Your first clue for three points. This film features a cowboy, a spaceman, and a potato. <laughs> okay. Um, I have. Oh, 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 oh. Toy Story. Is oh, the correct answer. Of course, of course. Yay. Which means 
Uh, this week we have Catherine on 10 points and Chris on 7 points and I believe that means... This week's winner is... Catherine. <laughs> you, you use a jingle. We weren't we... quite prepared for that jingle-wise, were we? No, that's, that's literally never happened before. <laughs> But, so, uh, Catherine, you have not only have you won your first ever game of geeks, but you've also not upset the balance between the game that Chris and I are currently playing. Indeed. I, I'm very impressed that you were going to count that if I had won it. <laughs> well, you'd have won, wouldn't you? Yeah, but not against you. Well, no, but I, you know, I certainly think the questions were of a, were of an all right caliber, so we could yeah, have... Uh, we a could similar, have perhaps, perhaps even more challenging caliber. <laughs> So the, the theme no for offense, the Catherine. Game of Geeks no. questions this evening was largely uh, American stuff and also a bit of sci-fi thrown in. So yeah. um, to, to really celebrate me being here five and a half thousand miles away from the studio. Indeed you are. Uh, and thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. That's right. Well, I hope uh, you enjoy the rest of the show. I'll be listening. Yeah. And uh, I look forward to being back in the studio with you in two weeks' time. Yeah. It. We uh, can't wait to have you back. Yeah, we can't wait to have you back. We you eagerly, just want the gummy worms. Eagerly await the gummy worms, as I was about to say. Uh, <laughs> and also, I, I'm eagerly awaiting having someone to go and watch the new Star Trek film with. This is true. Yes, very excited about that. So uh, I'm sure we'll be doing an equally uh, equally spoiler-free review yes. on, on my return. Mm -hmm. As per usual. Um, yeah. But for now, thank you very much for joining us from the US and for a very, very fun game of geeks. Um we recommend you call your dentist uh, from the <laughs> gummy worm situation. Yes, well, uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the show and uh, thanks, Geekly. Geekly. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you, Kez, for joining us. Um, yes. We will be later in the show checking back on things like our Would You Fund It uh, and our hipster logo competition, which is still ongoing. We've got a lot of... Uh, a lot of entries coming in uh, on Twitter. Uh, do continue to throw those together and we will be awarding gummy worms, hopefully slightly less uh, mania-inducing and teeth-rotting ones. Uh, but we will be awarding gummy worms to the, uh, the best entry. You are listening to the Geekly Chronicles. Now, the shopping forecast issued by the Geekly Chronicles on behalf of IKEA at 1900. The general synopsis this evening. Helmer, 7. Omar and Boholman, alternating 4 or 5. Grunker, good. Dining table, 6 when Buster, 8 when Agam, and unaffordable when Nils. Stugvik, Godmoron, and Langesund, 4. Flushing, likely. Tarva, Undredal, voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? Nockaby, Svalsta, stick at, comfort expected, relaxation later. Alric, two, Skullberg and Sporen, six, later seven, severe rotation expected. Papis, Knaglig, Drona, boxes, good. Lenart, twelve, drawing draws for draws, likely. Malm, Patrol, Gotham, Locke and Hybe, recalled but not forgotten. Shot Bullar, only if you've been good, meaty and ball-like, Lingonberry possible. And that ends the shopping list. Er, uh, forecast. It's like Nyan Cat, only we don't poo rainbows. Well, depends how many gummy worms we've eaten really, doesn't it? Um... That buzzer noise I had from Game of Geeks that went a bit like this. That was former Prime Minister David Cameron do doing a little tune to himself as he went back into Downing Street after announcing uh, that, uh, that Theresa May would be our Prime Minister on Wednesday. And the wonderful people at Classic FM have done a musical analysis of the tune. Would you like to hear some covers of what people are calling Cameron's Lament? Oh, yes. We will have a new Prime Minister in that building Here's behind me his, uh, uh, by Wednesday evening. Thank you very much. And then he turns to go back into Downing Street. There it is. Right. Here is 
some more versions. So uh, there are some versions, some variations on uh, Mr. Cameron's uh, little little ditty. Do you know what I hear when when I hear it? I I have no idea what well, you well, hear. Shall play I uh... it, play it again? Yeah. Do 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 do. It's yeah. all Star Trek when I hear it. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> that's fair enough. I can see that. Um, so earlier in the show, uh, we challenged you in the Tumble Fumble to create hipster versions of the Geekly logo we using did. hipsterlogogenerator.com. And you have. You've been sending in your submissions to our Twitter account at GKLYCO, and we have been enjoying them very much in the studio. But now it is time to pick a winner. And we have looked at all of them. But Catherine, there can who's only the be winner? one winner. And uh, I believe we've gone with Elaine. Yes, Scattermoon Scatter on Twitter, Elena Vision on Twitter, um, has has sent in a logo that's that's quite nice. It's got um, the the sort of cross thing with the arrows. arrows. It's got the geekly glasses, the, the colour, and it's got all of our initials, which is quite nice. I thought that was a bit different. Yeah, hmm. and, and very appropriately hipster. So thank you very much. And a box of gummy worms is on its way to you. Um, so, yeah. Speaking of things that you, the audience, have been involved in as well, there's a Would You Fund It on the go. There is. And Zombie Cluder was the idea. Do you want to remind us what that was? Well, it was uh, a version of the classic board game Cluedo, except this time it's all taking place in an abandoned town after the zombie apocalypse. Yeah. That, I think Fair that pretty enough. much sums it up. Yeah, yeah, it does. And our audience tonight have decided unanimously. Oh, I got 100% there. But which way? Oh, oh, I hadn't counted the Twitter poll as well. Very nearly, unanimously. Oh, Save no. for one, <laughs> no. one person oh. have voted to fund Zombie Cluedo. Woohoo! Uh, with, <laughs> with, with a lot of, a lot of votes in favour. Um, so, uh, so well done, Catherine. Yeah, uh, thank that's, you. That's another, another would you fund it in the bag. Uh, which I believe puts you on two now, doesn't it? I think so, yeah. And My first one wasn't funded. I know that. Uh, which means we are all on two. <gasps> wow. Wow. Someone's got to win this. I know. <laughs> Who's it going to um, So I suppose we shall find out. I believe it is my turn next uh, next week. Or oh, the two weeks after that, um, yep. I think. Next time. Next time. Um, to come up with another one. And then we will battle it out during episode 10 and find out who's the, uh, who's the winner. Yay. It's exciting. Uh, but thank you very much to everyone who has voted in that. Um, it's, it's been very, very fun. Speaking of things that are very, very fun, I'm trying to do this all in one long thing of bad segues. Okay. <laughs> uh, we've got a new thing to do. Uh, well, I believe you've week. already been doing it. I have already been doing it, but you are joining me to do it. Uh, we here at Tiny Kettle, that's uh, the people that make this this show, um, have a brand new show presented by me uh, called Teleblob, all about television, film, and all of that sort of thing that comes in your uh, comes through your screens and into your eye holes um, and ear holes and ear holes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, and uh, we've been going, we've just done two episodes now. Kez was on it last week, uh, and the first week was uh, chat room regular Alyssa. And you're joining me I am. next week to talk about Ghostbusters. I am, I am unreasonably excited about this. Yes. I, I, I've been looking forward to doing this so much. Well, you do work on the show as well. 
So. <laughs> and, <laughs> I love the telly. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You you possibly are more telly trash than I am. Mm-hmm. Um, which is... I, I pretty much live at feat. the dump when it comes to being telly trash. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Classily done. Uh, but that is coming out on Monday, which will be the 18th uh, of July, I believe. Um, at tellyblob.com. You can find all the details at tinykettle.com as and well. And listen back to those past episodes on there as well. You can indeed. Uh, and get involved on Twitter and Facebook if there's things you spot that you think we should be talking about. Uh, we're also on Tumblr because Catherine works on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, it was going to happen. It was inevitable. Mm-hmm. Uh, so do catch that. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to talking about Ghostbusters and being able to say all the spoilers that we couldn't on this show. Yes, the Teddy Blob does contain all the spoilers. All the spoilers. Mm-hmm. Um, we're also going to be talking about Ab Fab. Uh, and the new series of Suits, which uh, was back yes. recently, and I have, among and other I am things. so far behind on yes. Suits. It's, it's ah, I I'm, know. I'm having Suits panic. Uh, so catch that on Monday. Uh, but yeah, it's it's been a good show so far. This so far. one, um, <laughs> this one, not the other one. The other one, different show. I'm confused um, now. I'm very confused as well. Uh, but uh, I very much enjoyed Transatlantic Game of Geeks. I did too. I um, I won. Just yeah. I don't know where that came from, really. <laughs> it's. I don't know where I pulled. Um, I don't know where I pulled Toy Story out of, really. I, I think <laughs> I watched it once when when it very first came out, and I've not seen any of the sequels or anything. So how I managed to get that, I have no idea. I think I've seen the first two, but I I really should have got it, but I just did, didn't think it didn't occur to me that they might be toys. Uh, <laughs> no. the, the people in the question could be toys, <laughs> could be about seven inches tall. Made of plastic. Because there was something called like cowboys and aliens or something, wasn't yeah. there? Yeah, there's ago. been cowboys and aliens. Um, there's lots of films like that. There's the uh, the wonderful way that Malcolm Tucker from The Thick of It describes Star Wars as the mm-hmm. film with the space hairdresser and the cowboy. Um, <laughs> so those were all... I would uh, watch that. I would watch that, yeah. Especially with his tinfoil pal and his pedal bin. <laughs> Uh, so thank you very much, very much, Kez, for joining us from the other side of that big wet thing. Uh that you got going on from five and a half thousand miles away thank you to everyone that listened and who voted in favor of uh of zombie cluedo (laughs) yes uh we i i would love to play that game personally Mm -hmm. i think we've got to we've got to actually get this funded i'm not looking forward to the cleanup after though no and speaking of cleanup afterwards uh thank you kez for the gummy worm segment (laughs) indeed (laughs) We're also. I'm we're not also sure not whether I'm looking consequences. Yeah, I'm not sure whether I'm looking forward to tasting the worms or or dreading it. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's gonna be fun. Uh, but that about brings us to the end of the show. It and has. thank you very much for listening to it. Uh, we will be back in two weeks' time, as per usual. Mm-hmm. Uh, so as we will we do. see you on the 29th of July. Thanks for looking it up because I was just doing the same and I could not <laughs> find it. But for now, from me, Chris. From me, Catherine. And from Cares in America, it's goodbye. Bye. You've been listening to The Geekly Chronicles. Content was researched and vaguely fudged together by Chris, Catherine and Cares, who are also your hosts for this evening's show. The Geekly Chronicles is an independent production. Any reference to any persons or things living or dead was probably an error. What is reality anyway? Don't take the blue pill. Live long and prosper. Wear sunscreen. Someone give me a hand to scrape Kez off the ceiling.